Good to know you're still with us. Now, as the world continually advocates for social distancing in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, the COVID Kogi, the Katsina state government, and just before we came in, we also heard that the Kogi state government has lifted suspension on Friday congressional prayer with immediate effect. The state had banned religious gatherings just two weeks ago. And in River State, we have the Caventon pilots who were arrested for flying a helicopter into the state, which had already barred vehicles and flights from outside from coming in. They were said to have had permission to fly in from the federal government. For this conversation, I still have joining us via Skype legal practitioner Adeshina Fagbero. Thank you very much for staying with us. Thank you very much. And of course, uh, before we get to, um, you know, pick his brains up for this conversation, we will have a quick one, an update from Katsina State um, via a journalist, Nafal Ahmed. Thank you very much for joining us, Nafal. It's a pleasure. All right. Walk us through what the reality of the lockdown is in Katsina State. Has there been observance? Yes. So, um... Kazuna State um, issued the direction to, to lock and also and some of the, the workers that like three weeks ago. But that didn't happen without the uh, contribution of, of the stakeholders, both from the this angle, uh, traditional. Uh, 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 Nafal, could you speak up a little louder? I'm having difficulty hearing you. Okay. Can you hear me now? A little better. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. So the the order was was placed about three weeks ago after the government had a sit down with all the relevant and decided that it wants to impose lockdown and it wants to end fighting affairs. All right, um, you, you, you know what, uh, we will get back to you so uh, viewers can actually hear what you're saying. We will try and call you back in a moment. Do hang on. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. All right, um, additional please, let's just start the conversation and then we'll get that update in a bit. What worries you about this development in particular? Kogi Katsina lifting a ban on a pandemic that just seems to have um, started sort of, uh, I know yes. it has a negative connotation, settling into the country. Yes. Well, you know, the most, you know, the biggest thing that worries me is, number one, that Katsina's state is the state of the president himself. And number two, Kogi state is the state of the governor that appears to be the president's favorite son. So those two states, quite frankly, couldn't have gone ahead without the president's uh, tacit approval. Um, this could either mean that state governors have more powers than um, they appear to have, uh, and it could also mean that, well, it it's clearly demonstrates that uh, both states are very strong in faith. You know, they're very strong in faith uh, because um, the primary thing is that they want to go and gather for their religious worships, uh, believing that uh, no harm will be done to them. Uh, I also note that the governors of each state uh, urged uh, the imams and the and the the the, who, the religious leaders to make their services short and to provide the necessary. Um, Hand sanitizers. Uh, yeah. Yes, hand sanitizers. But well, is that going to really be effective, considering what we know about the virus? That sometimes people well, are symptomatic. That, that, yeah, that's the point. I, 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 I think for now it makes sense. It makes better sense that we should um, sort of limit those congregations until a time when we are sure. Um, it is a risk. It is a very, very high risk. It is a risk that well. If nothing happens there, everyone will clap for them and say that they were men of faith and they were right. If something happens, they will end up having to take responsibility till eternity 
you know, for 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 some great damage. But of course, we pray that nothing happens. But I'm let's not... be honest. The truth of the matter is that, um, to be honest, um, some states states appear to be free to do what they wish in certain areas. And um, for me, uh, both states, um, you know, they question the, uh, you know, the the the, the constitutional. Uh, um, uh, authorities. Re oh. I recall that in Katsina State, that um, that was the state where the young people went on riot and burnt down a petrol station. Uh, yeah, station. That, that, I actually tried reaching no, some representatives. So, exactly, see, sorry, I'm not sure that anybody has been reprimanded for that. This particular backing down now will just send the signal that that's the way to go, you know. So it's for me, it's a dangerous signal. I don't think it's right. I'm just right. trying to be diplomatic. And All I don't right. want to insult anyone. Uh, but it's uh, absolutely uh, not right. Yeah, uh, I, I'm told we have the journalist from Kat Sinner on the line again. Oh. Let's try and see if we, the, the, the contacts will be a bit better this time around. Thank you for joining us, uh, Nafal. It's a pleasure. I hope you can hear me now. Yeah, it's a little better. It's still low, but I'm, I trust we can uh, manage. So go ahead and tell us what the situation is. There was something that our guest talked about, and that's the fact that there was a protest um, days ago after an imam was arrested for violating the lockdown. Do you think maybe this has any bearing to the decision to lift the ban on worship? Well, you know, it would look like that for the people that are not on ground here. Yeah. But the situation is quite um, Yes, the government did ban uh, Friday. There were protests in Kusada local, uh, a local government from the east. Uh, but that that doesn't have anything to do with the government to lift the ban. Like I said, three weeks ago, governor and from the religious perspective from the traditional rulers and all the other relevant stakeholders met and agreed on a decision to place a temporary ban on the congregational prayer, pending on um, their close monitoring situation on ground. They used um, every Wednesday to to really go, uh, to look in the progress of the amount of the level of by the same. Uh, stakeholders, and uh, last Wednesday, I had to sit down and and decided that they have made enough awareness to, to kind of ask the law on. All right. Um, uh, thank you very much, Nafal. Um, uh, we we're able to get some of the things you said, but it was not too clear. So I'm afraid we'll have to let you go at this moment. Thank you very much. We'll speak with you another time. It's a pleasure. All right. Um, Adoshina, are you still with us? Hello? I am. I am. I'm Were good. you able to catch some of the things that he said? Yes, I did. Okay. W would you react to that quickly? Yes. You know, just in a summary and in ballpark, uh, I wanted to make, while he was talking, uh, I could see that, yes, they did the consultation. But what this just means, and the message that I have concerning this, is that states that are complying or are approaching it in stricter ways actually now have the legitimacy to restrict others coming from other states that are not complying in the way we are. You get my point? So, for instance, Lagos State or Go State has the right now to restrict people from Katsina to come into Lagos, because the standards which they have complied with in Katsina is different from Lagos. And it's OK. You know, if, if, if they can agree with it, then there is no problem, you see. But to have one set of, where well, this is an issue that we know that is cross-cutting. If those states actually want to be as independent as that, which I think that we should even have. I mean, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a proponent of restructuring. You get my point? Where you give each state the liberty to approach its problems in the way it can, right? 
So, and I think Katsina has done that, and I think Kogi has done that. So I believe that other states, too, should have the liberty of response. So, what, what, so and this is what is going to make it tidy, because if I restrict in my own state, right, people from attending the mosque, Saudi Arabia, they don't, they, they, well, they, they don't, they, they hajj. There's nobody there to, 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 to stone the devil. There's nobody there going for the hajj this time around. You see, that they are not even inviting people in. And that's where the, the religion is, you know, really done. There are right. other states that are allowing religious practices, but the kind of technology, the kind of sanitary uh, uh, um, arrangements they have, I doubt if Kogi and Katsina have those states. But I'm saying that I respect their faith. I respect the confidence. Honestly, uh, you know, I, I desire and I wish that we could all have that boldness and confidence that no, we plead the blood for Christians, they will plead the blood of Jesus that it will not come, and Muslims, and we we'll continue whatever we are doing the way we are doing it. That's All right, so uh, um, uh, because we're time pressed, I need us to yeah. uh, move a little and go to River State. Um, oh. I'm, I'm sure you're aware of the situation there yes. between yes. Uh, the governor and the federal government over who should fly in and who shouldn't fly in yeah. um, as yeah. it stands. And the, the Minister of Aviation said something that I want, I want to get a bit of a clarification on. He says, besides the federal government, no other person had the legal right to legislate on civil aviation. As Aside the law, what other courtesies or laws are, I mean, um, norms are there that should be observed in such a, you know, a tricky situation as we have now? You see, it goes back to what we're saying. It goes back to the powers between the, in the executive, uh, the exclusive list and the concurrent list of the Federation, which is the, at the heart of the imbalances and the weakness in the management of this country, to which some people, including myself, have proposed that we restructure this country in a manner that will be manageable. If you say a governor cannot restrict people entering his state on the basis of a pandemic or so that he can regulate, right, then, you know, if he can do it by land, and you leave the space open in the air for anybody to drop in, I think, you know, there is a lacuna there. I believe that the governor also said that, look, you can land. I mean, you don't, they will have no power over you in the air. But as soon as you hit your feet on river state soil, right, you shouldn't be found wanting in certain areas. So they have absolutely the right to make land on the uh, law on the land. If the helicopter were flying in the air, the governor would not arrest them. Okay. Well, what about what about the what about the, the what about the shutting down of the offices of the uh, company? Was that a wise move by because Weekend? Because the company, because the company, is the 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 people who are acting on the company, who moved the helicopter, who landed, and who are moving and doing that, they 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 were uh, uh, acting as agents of the company. So therefore, the company is vicariously liable for the act or the omission of its officers. Okay. And what the government is saying is that in order to prevent that, uh, a temporary relief, they will shut the offices. Okay, um, uh, time is never a friend on this program, but I, I will ask this last one because it's very crucial. Communication in times of crisis like this, how would you access yes. quickly, as quickly as you can, the, yes. the mood of communication so far, the effectiveness of communication in the management of this crisis, oh, yes. and what can they do to improve on it so we don't have situations like this? Yes, it's, it's open. You see, this, we have to practice open government and accountability, and people need to know. Um, public officers should not always um, equate security with secrecy. Um, the more you hold withhold the information, you, the more you allow people to conjecture. See, uh, communication is two-way. You are not only speaking to the people, but you're also listening to them. So feedback mechanism from the people. The government, too, should listen have time to listen to the people through very many avenues, including legislatures, 
legislators, people, civil society, there is a whole raft of people that the government can get its feedback from, including its officers. But usually we are used to government uh, pricing announcement. The fact that the government makes an announcement doesn't mean it has communicated. It's that is still one way. Has it listened to other people's feedback? That is the question. And until we get that efficient two-way mechanism, uh, using various media, uh, we wouldn't get communication right. But you're right, communication is fundamental and most important. Thank you very much for your time with yeah. us on the program tonight. Your thoughts, I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you very much. All right, we will take our plots report now. And when we return, I will give you my take. Stay with us. An estimated 39 prisoners have recently been granted clemency, according to a statement by the Attorney General of the Federation, Abu Bakr Malami, under the directives of President Mohamed Buhari. The process was activated at the Kuje Correctional Center earlier today in Abuja. Their names will be published in the official gazette, according to the statement by the AGS office. In a video earlier today, the Minister of Interior, Raouf Aregbeshola, expressed that 2,600 prisoners qualify for Irrespective of our station in life, respect and courtesy, showing of politeness in our attitude and behavior towards others, will stop off many unnecessary quarrels. This is not a time to be distracted by avoidable political intrigues from the goal of protecting and saving lives. I urge the NMA and other like associations who are aggrieved to consider the implications of escalating an increasingly volatile situation. Government indeed should have listened and carried key stakeholders along in deciding to bring in the Chinese medical team. They still can choose to be wise and use this opportunity, as unpredictable as it is, to work towards repairing a badly fractured relationship with the health sector. For the states that have lifted the ban on social gathering, going by the continuing lockdown in other countries with more robust infrastructure and systems in place, with some even considering extending the lockdown in spite of the huge costs, I am of the opinion that it is very unwise to allow people congregate when we are still daily confronted with new infections. Keeping religious services brief will not do much. Neither is giving directives that can hardly be effectively monitored with what we do know about the coronavirus. As the religions say, fate without works is dead. Thank you for watching the program tonight. As always, please share your thoughts on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Plus TV Africa. Remember to tag me to your comments and issues discussed here on Twitter at Felicity underscore. Until I see you again, please be well. <laughs>